Good morning. All right, if you'll stand up with us. start this morning, we want to ask God to awaken us, to bring us to life, to have us come into a place of excitement and joy. And I just wanted to, there's this, um, this thing last night, that I, I did not sleep very well last night, but I kept waking up with the same song on my head. It's a song called Gyra um, by Elevation Worship and Map City Music. Um, and the song isn't as important as the name itself. And this idea that I kept waking up over and over and over again with this verse that God is enough. The, the, the name Jehovah Jireh means that God is our provider. And I wanted to um, ask us to respond to that in worship this morning. I should have started this by saying, hey, welcome. My name is Eric Fiend. So there's that again. I forget that every week almost. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us at Common Ground Northeast. All right, got all the little plot lines in there. Um, but this is what I want us to focus on today as we come together in worship. It's, it's just this. Um, that idea of Jireh comes mostly, it's all throughout the scriptures, but very specifically when Abraham is asked by God to sacrifice his son. And he goes up onto the hill. He brings the knife. He's getting ready to do this thing. And then God says, no, 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 I'm the one who provides the sacrifice. And so we sit under the grace of God who provides the sacrifice for us. 
And I want us to come this morning awakened by the love of God that it is so great, so powerful, so perfect that he would invite us into this. And even at the moment of saying, hey, you need to do something on your behalf for this relationship to work, God says, I'm going to provide that. And so I want us to respond this morning with just a quick call to worship back and forth. It's just going to be one line on your part. Say, we give you thanks. Try it with me. We give you thanks. So listen to this. Great God of our lives, for all that is gracious in our lives, revealing the image of Christ, we give you thanks. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends, we give you thanks. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, we give you thanks. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play, we give you thanks. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we give you thanks. Yeah, for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord, to you, O oh God, be praise and glory. We give you thanks. Amen. Let me pray for us. Lord, let us come under the umbrella of unity, under the banner of Christ and his love that Jaira, you are the provider of all things that we need. May we content ourselves in you in the midst of all kinds of things that vie for our attention, our allegiances, our affections, our, uh, our loyalties, God. Free us from those things, even though they tell us they will give us freedom. You alone bring us freedom, Lord. Will we submit our hearts and our lives to you, the King of kings, this morning? And we ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Would you continue singing and lifting your voices in worship this morning?
to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth the whole shall not kneel and shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
Father, be glorified <laughs> in us, in our gathering through Hazel today. Father, you have created her for this, to deliver your word with compassion, with boldness, with fervor, with energy, <laughs> with awe. May your spirit fill her, and may we be humble and submissive as she delivers your word this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we all pray. Amen. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> well, it's good to be with you all here today. I think we have a quick engagement video. We can go ahead and check that out right now. Hey, y'all. My name is Sam Linetti. I'm the formation pastor here at Common Ground Northeast. Here we don't believe that we attend a church or go to a church, but that we are the church and that we carry the kingdom wherever we go, whether it's in our neighborhoods, where we live, where we work, or where we play. This week, I want to highlight an organization called Care Portal. Care Portal partners with DCS to provide basic needs for families in order to keep kids in loving homes and out of the foster care system. Y'all, we've been a part of this organization since 2019. And since then, we've been able to meet 45 requests that has uh, transferred to 103 children being loved on, cared for, and provided for. And y'all, just within the past 12 months, we've been able to meet 22 requests and 51 kids served just in the past 12 months. Y'all, this has totaled uh, all together to become a, an economic impact of over $33,000. Y'all, that's something to celebrate. I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of this organization, and I'm so excited to be a part of our family here at Common Ground Northeast that, that seeks to meet the needs of families right here in our community and, and serve and love children. And y'all, uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, our coordinators, Leanne Ebling and Nikki Manili for taking a lot of this and running with it and, and providing opportunities for our congregation to get involved. I want to share with all of you that we are going to have a Care Portal celebration for anybody that's been involved, as well as anybody who is interested more in learning about and jumping on board with Care Portal. We're going to have a celebration uh, Sunday, August 8th, after service from 1130 to 1 p.m. Food will be provided. And y'all, we need you to register for this. So if you're interested, make sure to go to www.cgnortheast.com, search our menu and click on our bulletin. And there'll be a registration there where you can register to come to that meeting to celebrate. And there'll also be a, a small training. Uh, there's a couple of new things and ways in which we can get involved there. So if you've been a part of Care Portal, you don't wanna miss this to celebrate and learn some training. And y'all, if, if you're interested in jumping on board with Care Portal, make sure you register and you're there to get the training you need as well. If you have any questions about Care Portal at all, or you would love to get involved and, and jump into that uh, email link uh, already, uh, go ahead and email Leanne Ebling at leanne.j.ebling at gmail.com and she can get you connected with everything. Y'all, I love y'all. Continue to be the church where you are and let's jump in and continue to serve and love our community. And, and one of the things that, that um, in our missional engagement here that I think is so fascinating is if, you, if you're not familiar, just to fill in some gaps, Care Portal, um, he, Sam said it in there, but the idea of just being able to uh, jump in and be an advocate on behalf of those who, um, these, are, these are folks who, um, as, as uh, the, the ministry Hands of Hope works with people, there are some people that get removed for, for legitimate reasons, but every once in a while you get a situation where um, somebody is about to be removed from the household that they're at, their home, because of something very simple, that a need that could be met very easily, like uh, in one case, one had a, a roach infestation problem, and we just needed to pay someone to come in there and clear that up, and that's all it took, and that person was able to remain in their household with their family and not get taken into the foster care system, and so this allows us to be that intervention, that in-between, that as these people are 
are um, work through this process, they get to see, hey, if you can just provide a twin bed, this is, um, done. This is a done deal. They get to stay in, inside of their homes. And so Care Portal allows us to know when those things pop up. I am thankful to say I will often click on the email when we get it, and everything has already been taken up within hours of this being posted because of Common Ground Northeast. And so I'm proud of what we do in that. And I just want to say an encouragement. Don't grow weary in doing good. Continue to do that. And if you have any interest in being a part of that, I know some of those emails are, um, we're getting thrown away, if you did, uh, thrown out there. And if you didn't catch them, go ahead and email us at office at cgnortheast.com and we'll still be able to figure out um, and help you out with whatever it is that you need. Well, once again, welcome. Um, we're glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us in person. If you're joining us online, um, one of the first things I want you to know is we want to get connected with you or help come alongside you in your walk with Jesus. And so if you're in person and you're coming for the first time, we'd love for you to grab a connect card. Just fill that out and we, we will follow up with you during the week this time. You can either um, drop it in the tithes and offering box or go to the connecting place as you uh, exit on the left. But also if you're catching us online right now, there should be a link posted in the chat section for you to click on in this moment so that you can give us your information if you're interested in getting connected with us. Please do that. We'd love to be able to come alongside you um, in your walk with Jesus. If you've been a part of Common Ground and this is your house, like this is family right now, and you're coming into the family gathering, we just want you to know that there's something you need. Please reach out to us. We've been praying for people. We have a consistent prayer rotation going on. Um, we've been meeting with people as things have loosened up and people are able to get together. Um, and then being able to see people on site has also been a huge blessing. But if there's something you need, please, again, email us at office at cgnortheast.com. Before we move on and before um, we, we, have our, uh, we open the Word of God today together, um, there's a couple of things I wanted to highlight. One is just um, this term we don't often use, but what I want you to, to know is that um, during COVID, a lot of our norms got uh, decimated. <laughs> there's, no, there's no nicer way to put that. And so as many of you in your life and household, so are a lot of our processes, but we're trying to, as things get going, re-embrace and re-bring back things. And so our process um, uh, for getting connected here at Common Ground is if you're new, and I know a lot of people have come over the last year, started watching online, um, our first step for you is to go to CG DNA, which is Common Ground DNA, just finding out what we're made of, where we come from, our history, who we are, our values, statement of beliefs, things like that. If you have any questions about that, um, and I think that we're doing that on August 1st. Yeah, yeah, August 1st, right after the service. We don't have childcare or food for that, um, but we'll make sure that it's quick unless you have questions, and then you can stick around and linger and ask those questions. But it's just a, a quick, short um, a, a way for us to give you just the official, this is who we are and where we've come from, our background. Our next step from that, though, is if you want to get further connected is to get into a house church. And we launch house churches about quarterly here. Our next house church launch is um, on September 12th, the second week in September. Um, as soon as we get done with the holiday, we want to get you connected, and you'll be brought into our house church launch process, um, which involves a curriculum called Rooted and some other things that happen. You can show up on September 12th. Lunch will be provided for that. You'll just stay in the sanctuary afterwards, and we have a quick orientation that gives you, uh, hey, this is what you're signing up if you want to move forward with us in getting into a house church. If you decide not to go further in that process, that's fine. You can sit back, hang out with us in our service. Services and then join up the next time if you feel like God's leading you to do that. But the next on-ramp for our house churches is September 12th, right after service. Lunch will be provided. If you need child care, we just need to know. Um, and you can email Jody at cgnortheast.com. The one last thing I wanted to mention, and we mentioned it a couple weeks ago, um, or maybe last week, was um, we wanted to introduce just a, a, a moment that uh, gives us a little bit more time to breathe, a gathering of believers that gives us a little bit more time to breathe than our typical Sunday morning um, it allows us to do. If you read the scriptures, you'll find out that God expects people to come together, those who follow Jesus, to come together um, with a hymn, with a psalm, with a, it even says with a prophecy, with a teaching. And that's not often able to happen in a context like this. It's typically a teacher up front, and we can hang out. There's, there's people on stage that lead you through song, and all of these things are good. But what we want to do is provide an encountering God service, something that allows us to just rest and be in the presence of God a little bit longer. And so that will entail three things. We will have a worship leader here, and that person will lead us in praise and worship. We will have some guided prayers for you, but we also want to encourage you to pray and do the last thing, which is practicing the gifts. All right, we believe that God has given us great gifts to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers here in our congregation. And the way that we operate typically on a Sunday morning doesn't allow us all to be able to engage those gifts. And so on August 1st, that's that same day that I mentioned our 
um, our DNA um, class. Uh, in the evening from 6 to 8, we are going to uh, gather some people here. We will guide you and, and allow us to kind of have a time where we get to practice the gifts of the Spirit. Um, we want to do this in a way that's responsible, but that also allows us uh, to explore new territory, all right? And I'll make more sense of that as we get into that service. Um, but I want to invite everyone to be a part of that service, uh, encountering God, prayer, praise, and practicing the gifts. Amen. All right, you guys got all that stuff? Everyone took your notes. You know everything that's happening here. Um, I also think probably highlighting, just as Sam said, we have a bulletin page that puts all of our announcements. If you miss them on Sunday, please go to our website, click on the menu, and hit bulletin. I think it says online or digital bulletin, something like that. All of our announcements are there for you. Um, Cool. Well, it is, uh, we, are, we are coming to the end of our, what we've considered our summer series, which is Perspective Shift. We've asked numerous people come in to come in and speak, and the idea was just simply we would take our core um, kind of pillars here at Common Ground, devotion, community, and mission, and that we would ask people, not from our congregation, to come in and speak about those things, give us some perspective on these ideas. And I've taught once on each of those. Um, we'll finish out next week with the final one. But we do have one more speaker today that you all um, probably know a little bit, She's spoken here before, um, but she is also the associate pastor at our Common Ground Midtown campus. And so I want to ask you all to welcome Hazel Owen up to the stage. And uh, I'm going to pray for you, Hazel, before we jump in. But uh, if you, you all don't know, she is also a marriage and family therapist. I'm not sure if you're looking for people to jump in or if you're full, your books are closed. <laughs> Books are full. All right, no, no, not, not here, not this time. Um, but as I pray, uh, man, just a, a mantle of anointing. Uh, Hazel and I got, I got to know Hazel a little bit more when we did this preaching collective together. Um, and there was just so much that resonated with me of what she said, and even things in my history that she was pointing out um, in the midst of. Maybe you're kind of counseling me. I didn't maybe realize that that was happening. You don't even remember what was going on. Well, Jesus <laughs> hit me hard with some stuff that came out of her. So it is my honor to have... Yeah, I'll t- <laughs> I will. So uh, I want to pray for her, but uh, just to uh, allow her the opportunity to speak and, and for the blessing of who she is um, to be here in your midst. So thank you so much for being here, Hazel. Yeah, let me pray. Jesus, thank you so much um, for Hazel and her voice and um, the way in which she is able to take ideas and concepts, um, Lord, that you have sown into her heart and make them relatable to everyone. God, I I believe that I've seen that in her. And I also believe with 100% uh, in me, God, that this is a beginning for her, that she has so much ministry in front of her that maybe you haven't even opened her eyes to. So God, I just pray that she would listen to you, have her ears open to hear and eyes to see so that she would walk in everything that you have for her on this earth. And we ask for this right now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Good. Oh, there we go. Hello. Clearly, I don't need a mic. So, um, Pastor Eric, thank you so, so much for that prayer. Um, I'm going to have to talk to Pastor Jeff Kraski over at Midtown that uh, he needs to step his game up when I come up to preach. Uh, so, so, no, I really appreciate that, and I appreciate um, your friendship and, and just your encouragement. So, thank you so, so much. Y'all, it's so good to be back with y'all. I'm excited. Y'all, clap for Jesus. Uh, (laughs) This is the Lord's doing, and I'm super excited to be here with you guys. This is my third time preaching here over the years, and I feel like this time around I need to let y'all get to know me just a little bit. So one of the things that, um, and I think Courtney can attest to this, I'm a huge self-care, soul-care type person. I I like my alone, I'm an extrovert on steroids, but I do like my alone time. Um, There's something beautiful about just getting quiet and being by myself, and oftentimes, uh, one of the things that I do, I like to just take myself out on dates, you know. I'll, I'll go to lunch by myself, I'll go to dinner by myself, or just go hang out at a coffee shop. It's just my alone time. But one of my favorite things to do when I do take myself out on these solo dates, uh, I like to people watch. Not in a creepy, lurky kind of way, but just observing people just do them, 
right? It's, it's really a joy for me. Humans are interesting in, in many ways, and that's a loaded word. Uh, sometimes I get a good laugh when I'm at the grocery store and I see some kids doing TikTok videos in Al 7. Like, it's just really fun and funny for me. Or times when I see an elderly couple holding hands walking down the street. It's just so sweet, and I'm like, aw. There are also times when um, I'm, especially like over at Tarkington Park, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that area, but I'll sit outside of Tease Me Community Cafe, and I get to see kids playing, and their parents and caregivers kind of getting silly with them, and it just brings me so much joy when I see that. The best moments of people watching for me is when I see kindness and compassion out of humanity. Watching someone ease the distress um, of a mom who is wrestling with their toddler because their toddler is just having a, a bad time, they're having a rough time, um, or maybe they're just being two, because two-year-olds have their own personality. <laughs> or seeing some people come to the aid of someone who has been hurt in an accident or having some car trouble along the side of the road. Watching people feed those in need uh, and provide clothing or even what we just talked about with the care portal. I mean, it's just amazing. Seeing a group of people pray with and for each other in public. These are moments where, in my mind, it's like the gospel being lived out. They, they are moments where people are literally being the hands and feet of Jesus. And it's in those latter encounters uh, that, that I get to witness that makes it so much more special is that these are people who are just minding their own business, going about their day, and they see a need and they stop. They're not letting the need disrupt their agenda for the day. They stop. And when I see these moments, I, I tend to pause, and, and I often have a moment of reflection where I'm asking myself, well, Hazel, what do you do when you see need as you're going to and fro about your day? And so I'm going to invite you this, this morning to, to ponder some questions that I often ask myself. What do you encounter as you go from place to place? Have there been opportunity for you to see a need and meet it along your journey? As you go about your day, where are you being invited to be the hands and feet of Jesus? This is something that as Christians, I personally believe that we all should be watchful for. It's in our as-we-go moments where if we are paying attention, we have the opportunity to live in and live out the Great Commission. So... No surprise here if you have your Bibles. Turn with me to Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. I'm going to read from the New International Version, and it's going to be on the screen as well. Um, and the scripture reads, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. For those of you who are note takers, the title of my message is As You Go. Would y'all join with me in prayer? Lord, let the words of my mouth and God, let the meditations of our hearts, God, let them be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So just to give a little bit of context here, according to Matthew's account of the gospel, these were Jesus' final words that he shared with the disciples before he ascended back unto heaven. The disciples had spent the last three years up to this point with Jesus during his earthly ministry. They were all over their hometown of Jerusalem. They were teaching and healing and meeting all sorts of needs. Now, I imagine that after seeing their leader get crucified, that there's some great fear among them. And scripture alludes to that. 
Uh, so they are hiding at this point. And Jesus appears before them and spends some time with them before he ascends back to heaven. And at some point, um, each gospel have a, a different uh, take on this, this particular story. But at some point in these final moments, Jesus gives them one last word. I imagine um, as I read that a loved one who's, who's passing away and wants to give final words to pass along to those who are around them. It made me think of uh, my father who was starting to transition from his earthly home. And I remember during those, those months and weeks leading to his passing, how I would literally like just cling to every word and every, everything that he would say to me. And especially because we didn't have the best relationship, but our relationship was restored because of Jesus. And so in those final moments as his, as his caretaker, I literally would cling to everything that he would say. I imagine in this period before Jesus' ascension, the disciples are holding on to every word that Jesus is telling them. He tells them that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, Go, he tells them to go and make disciples of all nations. He instructs them on how they should do this, and he says, do this by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he says, teach them, uh, those that you encounter along the way, teach them everything that I have obeyed, that I have commanded you, that you have obeyed. Jesus assures the disciples that, hey, I'm going to be with you, though. And I need you to do this. The Great Commission was not just for the disciples in the text. This commission is for every Christ follower to abide by. So I'm a little bit of a, a nerd, and I, I own that. I love it. It's okay. Um, I looked up the word commission. A commission is an instruction, a command, or a duty. Its etymology derives from the Latin words com and mitiere. Com meaning with, together. And mitiere meaning to release, to let go, send, or throw. It is where we get the word mission from. So essentially, <laughs> when we're commissioned, we have to come together and then we must go. We have to come together, and then we must release. We have to come together, and then we must send or throw. We have to come together to do and be on mission. It's our togetherness. Authority was given to Jesus by God, and now Jesus is given the authority to the disciples as he commissioned them to go and make more disciples. That's more togetherness. And we, too, as believers, have been given the same authority. We have been commissioned to do the same. So just allow me to just um, parenthetically pause here for, for just a moment. Just, we're just going to bracket this. It's one thing for us as Christians to be commissioned to do something. But does that come from our state of being? Here's where I'm going with this. Oftentimes, I, I personally... I uh, believe that many people think of mission just merely as something to do. We get to go to the homeless shelter and do mission. We get to go to the, quote, inner city and do mission. We get to go to India and Africa and Lebanon and, and any other, and do mission. And that is great. <laughs> That's awesome. And we should do mission. I want us, I want to challenge us this morning to think of mission from the framework of our being. Before Jesus was, was crucified, he mentioned the greatest commandment was to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Then to love your neighbor as yourself. As Christ followers, we are Christ representers. Fair? Yeah. Okay. 
part of that mission is to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus says to love our neighbor, but he did not put restrictions on the type of neighbor that we should or shouldn't love. We do that. Loving God and loving our neighbor, Jesus says in Matthew 22, is the first and second greatest commandment. So as Christ's representatives, our mission should be that of Jesus. Our identity is rooted there, so we need to be on mission. In Jesus' first sermon recorded in Luke 4, he quotes Isaiah 61, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and some translations say the year of Jubilee. That's his first sermon. And then he says, this has been fulfilled, E.D., past tense, and you're here, meaning it's already done. I'm here. He, he lays out his mission and proceeds to fulfill that mission throughout his earthly ministry. It's right there in Luke 4. That's his mission. His mission was a foresight of what God revealed to the prophet Isaiah of the coming Messiah. So, as Christ followers, we all said that we are Christ representers, right? As people who say that our identity is in Christ, then our mission should be to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoner, to give sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Our mission should be also to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, regardless of if they agree with us or not, regardless of if they look different from us or not. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. So, so since this is part of who we are called to be as Christ followers, now we are commanded to fulfill the great commission instructed by Jesus in his final words to his disciples. We, it's easy to do something, but if our heart is not in the right place when we do it, ugh, I'm going to let that sit. So, back to the text. How is this done? First, Jesus tells them to go. Go and make disciples of all nations. I think, I got a lot of opinions. I think oftentimes many Christians um, believe that if they share, the, I know I did at one point, believe that if they share the gospel with someone that they have to ensure that that person has a conversion experience. Like it's my duty and my job to make sure that you have a conversion experience. And I'm not saying that that can't happen. I'm not saying that that shouldn't happen. But what tends to happen that is that if we go into that situation with that individual with that motive, we miss out on all the subtle ways that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus along the way. Right before his death and resurrection, Jesus taught about the final judgment in Matthew 25. Verse 35 to 40 says, for I was hungry, and, and, and you gave me something to eat. And, and I was thirsty, and, and you, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison. And you came to visit. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, 
you did it for me. It is as we go where we will encounter those who are hungry, thirsty, who are strangers, who are in need, who are sick, and who are in prison. It's as you go. As you go, when you feed the hungry, when you give the thirsty something to drink, when you invite the stranger in, when you clothe those in need and look after the sick or visit those in prison, it's in these moments that you have done it for Jesus. It's in your as-you-go moments of your journey, starting at home. Starting at home. Leaving your home, going through your neighborhood and community, and maybe for some of us, through the outermost parts of the world, it is where you will have opportunity, if you're paying attention, that opportunity will meet you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That opportunity will be there for you to make disciples. And I'm going to say this one more time. Notice I said it starts in your home. Sometimes we can get so busy with everyone else's need that we neglect what's happening at home. Next, in the Great Commission, Jesus instructs them to make disciples. Remember, as you go, the opportunity is waiting on you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So when you go make disciples, you are literally meeting people right where they are and journeying with them. You're getting in the thick of their mess, <laughs> and you're journeying with them. Your hands will get dirty doing this work. Jesus met um, his disciples the same way. Uh, l- let me give you some examples. He meets uh, the brothers, Peter and Andrew, at their job <laughs> while they were struggling on their job trying to catch some fish. And then all of them... <laughs> met James and John, who were also fishermen, and they were getting ready to cast their nets. They're trying to do their job. Jesus meet Matthew while he's sitting at a tax collector's booth, probably ripping off Jews and by overcharging them and keeping the profit for himself. But he meets these, and this is not all the disciples, um, but he meets them right where they are. And it shows that um, as he meets them where they are, he invites them with him, and he goes to spread his gospel. We have to learn to meet people where they are, to listen to them, to see their need, to resist our own biases and judgments about who they are, to be open to them just like Jesus is open to us. And in doing so, the opportunity will come for you to share the gospel to teach about Jesus, to baptize, to make a disciple. Doing this is is risky. I ain't gonna lie. It's scary. It was risky and it was scary for Jesus and his disciples as they traveled with him. Fulfilling the Great Commission, friends, is not an easy thing. I can remember being very terrified (laughs) to pray in front of people. I would be scared to even offer myself to come alongside someone who was in need or to invite a stranger in or to even just share about Jesus, even to share what Jesus was doing in my life. Like there was a moment in my life where I was really afraid of that. I was afraid of the rejection. I was afraid of being ridiculed or mocked. And I know that I've missed some opportunities in the past. But one thing that has helped me as I go now, because when you know better, you do better, is knowing that God is with me. (laughs) Jesus knew the risk. He knew that after what happened to him, his disciples will probably be more afraid than ever. He knew that. So Jesus ends his words by comforting them. And he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It don't get no clearer than that. I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
And what he's talking about here is the gift of the Holy Spirit that he's going to leave behind. Jesus leaves behind the comforter, the counselor, the spirit of truth. He leaves the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples and to be with every believer. Being on mission with God and doing God's mission cannot be absent from the Holy Spirit. You can't do this without the Spirit. It's not in your power. The disciples started doing God's mission right at home. So here's my charge. As you go from your home, through your community, and anywhere else God may send you, pay attention to the ways in which you and your being, I should say, and your doing could be mirrored in the way of Jesus. Start with your being first. Check that heart posture. Remember the power of Jesus, it's been given to you. That same power that raised the dead Jesus is the same power that is in the heart of every believer. And that power will help you live out the Great Commission in your community and in every place where God leads you. Last thing. Remember that as you go, God will never send you to a place where his grace cannot sustain you. So therefore, go and trust that God is going with you. Amen? Pastor Eric, would you pray for us? Bless y'all. Man, thank you so much, Hazel. Um, let, me, let me pray for us, and then we'll move into our response time together. Yeah, Lord, could you allow the word that Hazel just spoke into us sink, deep, sink deeply into who we are? Would you allow us, Lord, some of our spiritual lives are boring. That's because we're not taking risks. We're not saying yes when someone comes our way. We're not um, a- answering that call when it uh, is in the midst of our presence, God. And so would you awaken, as we prayed earlier through song, would you awaken our souls with your love? God, if we don't have stories to tell about the good things you're doing in our lives, it's possibly, probably, because we have decided to say no when those things came into our, our, our field of vision. So God, help us to see. Lord, just take what, uh, what Hazel has spoken and turn it into reality, God. Uh, your kingdom come alive in us. Yes, Lord. Let me pray for this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we do every Sunday, we move into a time of response in a couple of different ways that I want to just suggest to you. In a few minutes, we're going to sing together and raise our voices one more time um, as, as we do uh, in, in unison and praise, giving thanks to God through prayers and singing. So I want to invite you to do that with us. I want to invite you to give that if you would like to support what God has done here at Common Ground, the ministry is in front of us, um, and God has given you means by which to do that. We just want to ask you and give you the opportunity to do that um, here today. You can do that um, in person here if you're uh, on site, and there's a box here in the back on your way out. You can also do that online at cgnortheast.com forward slash giving. I did look it up. It is forward slash giving this time. Um, and so you can give uh, in a couple different ways online, even text to give, and that opportunity is there. But just want to give you the opportunity if you're um, interested in supporting us that way. And then uh, we want to um, uh, extend the offer of prayer to you. If you have any prayer needs right now, please feel free to reach out to us um, at office at cgnortheast.com. Um, or come up to me after the service, and I would love to pray for you here uh, today. And, um, and then finally, we, we, every week we do, uh, we remember together. We do this through the act of communion. Um, and every single week we do so, and I remind you um, of these two things, that we remember what Jesus has done for us, but that we're also kind of anchored between the past and the future as well, that one day we will sit at the banquet table in heaven with Jesus and all of the saints, every tribe, tongue, and nation represented. And so I want to encourage you as we take communion, bring that into the forefront of your mind. 
partake of the blood through the juice and, and, and the body of Christ through the cracker this morning, but do so in a way that asks the question, how can I embody that kind of community here and now, that kind of communion with God's people here and now. Let me read to you from Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30. It says this. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Yes. After a moment of reflection, you can partake of the elements this morning and we will leave today with those words that God would awaken us today on our lips. finished, if you'll stand with us.
Yeah, amen. As we leave, those words mean a little something different on the other side of Hazel's words. Would you go today being awakened by the love of God, knowing that you are the church, not this place, not this time on Sunday mornings, you and everywhere you go, you carry the gospel with you. Would you go now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, amen, amen. Have a good one, y'all. Yeah.